Hi and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at a camera from the early 80s and that is the Canon T50. The Canon T50 was the first of the T-series cameras and was introduced in March 1983 and production ran for six years until it was discontinued in December 1989. And it was quite a departure for Canon from its uh, typical um, designs of the 60s and 60s and 70s and it represented a change in the appearance of the cameras reflecting more of the de design of uh, 1980s and it's effectively replaced the Canon AE1 and the AL1. SLR cameras were taking a bit of a dip in the early 1980s from a sales peak in 1981 and with the T50 Canon went down the route of greater autom automation in order to revive sales and it certainly did so. And the T50 was the first in the line of a T-series of cameras. The T70 was released in 84, the T80 which is the rarer model in 1985 and the rain topping T90 was a fully professional camera and released in 1986. It, it, it is argued that T70 and the T80 were professional cameras but I suppose you could call them semi-professional. I actually purchased this camera new in 1985, believe it or not, in Tenerife and it was my first trip apart from school trips abroad and I bought this in Tenerife uh, along with this Canon 50mm f2. Normally they came with uh, an f1.8 uh, lens um, but it is quite a nice lens regardless, uh, it takes some nice pictures. I used it for the holiday there and a few times in the mid 80s. I actually bought this in 1985 and I used it to shoot I guess no more than 10 rolls and it's uh, sat in the cupboard since then and I've dug it out recently to take it and do some test shots which you'll see later on in the video. So let's have a look at uh, the camera in a little bit more detail. Um, First of all, when you pick the camera up, you can feel it's got quite a little bit of weight to it. Uh, not as heavy as some of the more modern cameras you get these days. Uh, and it weighs in at about, uh, I think it's 490 grams, which is around about a pound, 1.1 pounds. And this camera will not work without batteries, of which it takes two AA batteries. And I'll show you um, the underside of the camera in a short while. Um, it uses a vertical plane metal shutter uh, which is electronically controlled and this is a departure from the other cameras, uh, the AE1 and the AL1 which used a horizontal travel and its um, shutter. And this should allow for a higher shutter speed but this camera, the T50, retained the shutter speed range of the AE1 and the AL1 which was two seconds to one one thousandth of a second and Canon reserved the faster shutter speeds for the higher end T series of cameras uh, culminating in uh, the T90 which had a maximum shutter speed of one four thousandth of a second and ranging from 30, 30 seconds uh, to one four thousandth the lens mount is uh, a Canon FD mount and I think it was the last time the FD mount was used on a series of Canons by, cameras by Canon uh, and then they changed to the EOS um, series of lenses. Uh, to, to remove the lens you press the button there, the silver button and then the, cap, the, the lens will remove and the FD series of lenses were made for quite a while and there's a vast array of really good quality lenses you can get from Canon and third party suppliers and as I said this is the standard lens that came with the camera uh, the 50mm. Right a few more specifications on the camera the ISO speed settings range from 25 to 1 1600. Uh, the metering is TTL centre weighted average using a silicon photo cell. It has an automatic flash 
uh, with using the specially designed for this particular camera the Canon Speedlight 244T and you can pick these up for about uh, £5. I haven't got one for these yet uh, but it's something I will be buying in the near future. It has an auto wind uh, wind on which was the first incorporated I believe in a Canon SLR uh, but it doesn't have auto rewind. Those were reserved for the uh, T70, T80 and the T90 and the frame counter on this resets when you open the back to put, it, put in a new roll of film. Right, let's take a closer look at the camera. Okay, first of all let's have a look at the top plate. So here we have the uh, frame counter which I said it automatically resets when you open the uh, film back. Uh, the, here is the taking button and it's a two-stage electromagnetic shutter button. Uh, depress halfway and that will tell you if your exposure is going to be okay or not. And fully depress it uh, to take the shot. Here we have the function dial which has four settings. The first, first one which is, it is on at the moment is a red square and a now which shows you that the camera is locked and you cannot take a picture. And if we push the dial fully forward, which is not easy sometimes, we get a rapid beep which tells us that the batteries are in good condition. Third setting is program and that's all you need to do uh, to start taking photos. I'll go into a bit more detail on the program setting when we have a look at uh, how the camera functions. Uh, so the final is the self timer so we'll it beeps for seven seconds and takes a picture and you could hear the uh, the wind on motor there and it's quite a loud sound to be honest uh, the shutters quite noisy but the wind on is pretty loud so I'll set it back into program mode so we can have a look at that in a bit more detail soon if we move across here we see a hot shoe and that can be used in conjunction with the T244T uh, flash gun which was designed especially for this camera. If we look a bit further over here we see the rewind crank here and below that which you can just about see there, I'll zoom in a little bit the uh, ISO setting so what we need to do to alter the ISO setting is press that metal button down and then there's a lever at the back and we can change ISO as I said from 1600 to 1600 there, whoops, 1600 there and then it goes all the way down to 25 ISO. There's nothing on the right hand side of the camera but on the other side there is a uh, socket for a remote release. In order to open the camera as per usual it's pull and it snaps open and then we can see the fast loading there. We obviously put the film in there, just wind the film across, line it up with a red mark, close, close the back and take a it'll automatically wind the film on to the first frame. And there we can see the vertical metal shutter. Now on my version, for some reason, I don't know whether you can see it, the, between the second and the third metal um, sheet, there is a tiny gap. Now I wasn't sure whether this was going to affect the 
uh, taking of the pictures but it doesn't appear to it's still light tight now it hasn't been mishandled or misused this camera and it's just been in storage since probably about 1988-1989 when was the, it was the last time I used this camera and I shot a first roll a couple of weeks ago since then and they seem to have come out all right there, there is a little bit of light I wouldn't call it light leak um, but I'll show you the photos later on uh, if we look at the back again there is a removable eyepiece surround there and let's have a look at the bottom of the camera and here you can see the tripod socket there and that is the release to manually rewind uh, the film and then we have the battery chamber here which is just a pull to release it and there we go two AA batteries and that pretty much is it for the Canon T50 and its dials okay so how are we going to go about using this camera well you can argue that it does have a manual setting but why you'd ever want to use it on manual I don't know so if we did want to use it on manual we would move press the button next to the A and select your aperture on this particular lens it goes from f2 all the way up to f16 so let's say we want to set it to 2.8 then you would frame your film frame your image rather through the viewfinder and then half press the button and what you'll see in the viewfinder is a red flashing M sign so what that will tell you is that you are in manual mode and the fastest shutter speed or the only shutter speed you're going to be taking at is one thirtieth of a second which happens to be the uh, flash sync speed as well and that's it it won't give you any other option for shooting in manual okay you could adjust the uh, the ISO speed but and yes, you want to go through the uh, trouble of calculating what your exposure uh, ISO and aperture should be for one thirty of a second, then that's up to you. But it's not uh, a process I particularly would want to go through. So your other option is to just put it on automatic, which you do by pressing the button on the aperture ring and lining the A up with the orange uh, line there on the lens. So now you're in fully automatic mode and as I say you can get uh, speed from two seconds right up to one thousandth of a second. Again frame your image, half press the button and you'll see a green P in the viewfinder. I'll try to cut in uh, uh, an image of that and if it's a solid P then your exposure is correct and carry on and press the button if by any chance the P is flashing slowly it's uh, supposed to be about two frames two uh, flashes per second the shutter speed is one thirtieth of a second or slower uh, so it says it recommends that you either use a flash or you use a tripod to take it to take your image uh, if it's flashing very fast and uh, it's supposed to be eight, fra eight flashes per second then it's suggesting that shooting is not possible without using a flash. So before we go ahead and look at some of the images I took with this on a recent trip uh, to our, one of our local parks um, I'll sum up what I think of this camera and as it says Canon T50 programmed automation automatic film transport and it is essentially a point and shoot SLR 
it's good if that's what you want and I can't see any problem with that. People want good quality images from an SLR but don't want to go through the process of manual settings or have the option of manual settings shall we say. So for that reason alone if that, if that is what you want it's a re very good camera and it uh, gives you access to a wide range of superb quality glass. It's easy to use, it gives you very good images, uh, it's got auto film advance although it won't to auto rewind and it takes AA batteries. Canon recommend alkaline batteries for this camera and they will last uh, around about 50 rolls of uh, uh, 36 exposure film and it's fairly compact. Um, I haven't got any other Canon manual um, cameras to show you or to compare it against but it's around about the same size as a Canon AE-1. They're not so good, lack of functionality, the 80s design is a little bit marmite um, for those in the USA I suppose you either love it or you like hate it. Um, uh, I quite like the design to be honest, it's a bit of a departure from the, um, the previous cameras from Canon um, and they, they, as, as I say they lasted about uh, six years before the EOS cameras started to come out and I did actually buy a Canon EOS 5 which I've still got. Um, in fact I'll dig it out and uh, put it side by side with that one. So this is uh, my Canon EOS 5 which as I say I replaced this with although I didn't use this one particularly uh, a great deal when I had it uh, against the Canon EOS 5 and you can see the difference in size and despite the size difference the Canon T50 actually weighs more. Okay it's got the lens on so if we, if we take the lens off So I would still say that the Canon T50 is heavier than the EOS 5. There's probably a lot more plastic in this one. And this feels, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's mostly all metal, this one. Um, but again, just a comparison between the T50 C, T series and the newer EOS 5. So all that said, I think we will now have a look at uh, some of the images. Mm -hmm. 